How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here checking out Jellico and the 22 games they published for the NES according to NESGuide.com. It's part of a regular series where I like to rank and kind of review games from a specific publisher for a specific console. Today it's all about Jellico for the NES. 22 games to cover, we're gonna get right into it. That video starts right now. Astyanax is one that you've probably seen before. Maybe you've never pronounced it out loud. Is it Astyanax? You are Astyanax. Either way, it's a very, very solid game. It's, it's pretty fun too. I like the cinematics to it. It has a little cutscene little storyline in between levels. And it's weird, you play as this kind of typical guy, right? But then when you're playing the game, you're like this armored warrior with this giant axe. A little bit like Legendary Axe. Well, I think it only reminds me of Legendary Axe because you have an axe. And you don't always have an axe. Sometimes you upgrade to a sword and stuff like that later on. This game was the first game that taught me that level of patience where you can't just hack and slash all the time. You have to build up your charge meter and then when you hit it, if it's all the way filled up, it'll take more damage than if you just like, you know, slash, slash, slash and the meter doesn't have time to build up. Before Secret of Mana, this is the game that I saw that from. Astian Axe, Astian Axe, Secret of Mana, Secret of Mana. Lots of levels in this game. It has the bosses that are fun. I like bosses that are big and creepy looking, but also predictable in their patterns. Makes me feel better about myself, I suppose. It's another one of those games where you'll probably die more by falling into holes than by <laughs> getting hits from enemies because you actually get a lot of health even to start out the game with and everything too, but SDNX, SDNX. love this game, I'll give this game a B. Bases Loaded is arguably one of the most popular video game baseball series uh, for any console, especially during the NES era. And I like baseball games, I didn't care for these ones. The angles, the views, this kind of threw me off. What I do like about this game is that if you hold up or hold down while you're at up to bat, um, you can actually, you know, hit high, hit low, you can kind of hit outward a little bit. So that's, that's really cool. I'll give it props for that. And I will give it props for trying something new with the different camera angle. But also with that different camera angle, it makes it so it's hard for me to time exactly when to swing my bat. This is the first one here, kind of the staple one. I don't really care for it. I'm giving this one a D. And then you have Bases Loaded 2, second season. It's different where it even just kind of looks different. Like it just has a different angle to it. And then the diamond itself is at another odd angle. Um, again, they're trying something new, good for them. Uh, didn't work out for me though. I'm also giving this one a D. Bases Loaded 3, this one, I liked a little bit better than the other ones. A little bit, not by much, but I liked it a little bit better than the other ones. Same idea, same story, same thing. This one again changes just that kind of weird angle, that weird dimension, but I do like this one a little bit better than the other ones. I'll actually put this one as a C, but the other two are still D. Again, I try to rank these games among themselves from the publisher. So if the other two are Ds and I like this one a little bit better, we'll call it a C. And then you got Bases Loaded 4, which plays a lot like Bases Loaded 3. The redeeming quality for this one for me is it actually has Seattle on here. Now it's not the Mariners, and maybe it's for the better that it's not the Mariners, but you play as the red team. It's like the fictional teams, you know? But you have Seattle as a team that you can play as. It's still weird angle and all that, but what are you gonna do? I'll, I'll give this one a D. I promise I'm not giving this a D just because Seattle's wearing red, but it's just, man, I... there you go. <laughs> I'm not gonna explain myself, it's a D! <laughs> City Connection on the outside looks not great. But when you play City Connection and you get into it, it's very, very great. In my opinion, anyway. A lot of people don't care for this game and I understand why. Now, the gameplay of City Connection is you drive a car, in the cities there for every level. I think there's like eight to 10 levels, so maybe eight levels. And you have to fill in the uh, the ground. There's a game I used to have for the ColecoVision called Minor 2049er. Same idea, you just have to kind of paint the ground. And once you do all that, then you move on to the next stage. In your way, you have like police cars, you throw oil cans at them, you can bump them out of the way. There's cats in the road, you can't do anything about that. You just gotta jump over them or avoid them altogether. You can jump up the levels, you can turn around and stuff like that. You know, the animation style of this game, it looks really cool sometimes and sometimes it looks, looks kinda choppy, but I keep coming back to this game. I just absolutely love this game. There's an arcade version of this game too, that if, you, if you're only familiar with the NES version, they have an arcade version too, which is worth checking out. But even though the gameplay is simplistic, 
The graphics are kind of simple. I do like how the light from the windows kind of shimmer, like when you're driving. That's just something I liked about this game. The music, I mean, isn't great. It's catchy. It's catchy. You'll be singing it for, I mean, just like Bubble Bobble, you'll be singing it all the time when you're not even thinking about it. But man, all those things aside, just when it comes down to gameplay, I think it's a lot of fun and it's addicting and I keep coming back to it because I want to get farther. I want to see how far I can go. I'm actually, I'm going to give this game an A. Even if you disagree with me, again, like I said, totally cool. You might even give it an F. I love this game. I'm giving it an A. Cyberball is your robot football game. It's a little bit on the easy side, isn't it? If you played this game before, especially this NES version, it's a little bit on the easy side. Um, but that's okay, too, because that's that's actually, you know, n nothing wrong with that. Football games, man, I hate to say they're hit and miss for the uh, NES. Um, but sometimes you can do really, really well, and sometimes not so much. And this game fares a little bit better than some of the other football games, even though it's like with robots and with, you know, the ticking time bomb of, of your football. <laughs> You know, or things like that. Um, this game's okay to check out every once in a while. I'll, I'll put this game as a C. <laughs> Goal for the NES, one of the cheaper games on the NES too. And it plays okay if you like soccer games. I'm not a huge fan of soccer. You're always hitting the diagonal buttons on your controller and on a D-pad. It's not the most comfortable. <laughs> Maybe if, you have, if, you have the, if you have the nest advantage, it might be a little bit better for you. It's soccer, and it's, you know, what are you going to do? You play as countries in this game. So if you play as, you know, you don't play as the USA, you play as USA generic. You know, if you're going to England, you're not playing as, like, Man United or Liverpool or anyone like that. You're, you're just playing as England, generic England. Or Italy or Korea or whoever. You're just playing as the country. So it's like, you know, it's just generic soccer. Plays okay for a soccer game. It's, it's a D. This one's a D, anyway, for me. And did you know they made goal two at a different angle this time? One went one way and now it's going the other way. This game looks better, plays better. The computer um, attacks harder, <laughs> much much more of a difficulty level on this one than the original goal. And actually plays a little bit better, I think, too. I mean, it just it gives you that little bit extra freedom, I think. Same idea, too. You can't play as Liverpool, unfortunately, but you can play as England. You can play as USA. You can play as Japan, whatever the case. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. It's better. So if the other one was a D, I'll put this one as a C. You got hoops. This game's actually pretty cool. I kind of like this one. It's one-on-one. -on -one. I played a lot of one-on-one -on -one when I was in school. Um, I, I'm not, believe it or not, I'm six foot five. I'm not the best at basketball. I have terrible depth perception, but I like playing basketball. I like shooting hoops anyway. You know, so I, I played more one-on-one -on -one than I did like basketball, basketball, if that makes sense. So this game actually is pretty decent. Only a few characters you can play as, but there's also like girl characters, which was kind of cool to incorporate the, uh, you know, the, the lady population in, in video games to, in general. The shooting mechanics were not great, um, but just seriously, when you're playing a basketball game, you're tr just trying for slam dunks all the time anyway. So when you get close enough to the basket, it kind of goes to a very cool cinematic where you're either slam dunking or you're, they're both there and you're trying to swat the ball out of the way. I thought that was pretty cool too. Hoops isn't terrible. I'm gonna give this game a C. The Last Ninja was interesting to me. I remember seeing this game advertised pretty regularly for a while in video games and computer entertainment magazine as kind of like a PC ninja game. I thought it looked, I thought it looked cool. I thought it looked pretty neat. And then it finally came out to the NES and I rented it and I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Uh, just the angles were weird, the buttons were weird. It said it won game of the year, for what? You're a terrible ninja. You can punch and kick, and not even very well. I'm sure there are people who love this game, but believe it or not, especially compared to all the other sports games on this list already, The Last Ninja, me personally, I'm putting this game as an F. Oh, I'm sure you can go deep into this game on why it's better, but man, if it doesn't get you at the very beginning, it doesn't get me at all. And I'm just like, I'm not even gonna put my effort into it because I've tried several times. Several times have I tried, and it's like even when you get somewhere, it goes somewhere. You're just punching and kicking. It's 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 not. You're not a ninja. It's you know virtual. You know, walk around and beat up bad guy. Uh, something anyway. I don't know. It's an F. From the outhouse to the penthouse, you have Maniac Mansion. Now this game I also saw advertised regularly in video games and computer entertainment because they covered a lot of PC games, computer games 
along with your console games. And I was a console gamer, through and through. I didn't have a PC, not including the Atom computer, just because I had a ColecoVision adapter. Um, I didn't even play PC games until like the mid 90s, right? I remember seeing Maniac Mansion a lot in these video game magazines, and then it was one of those games where I was like, this will never come to the NES. It can't, it's, it's way too involved, it's way too deep. It'll never be on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And they brought it out for the Nintendo Entertainment System, and it's done so well. If you're not exactly familiar with Maniac Mansion, maybe you've heard it before, um, you're trying to save your kidnapped girlfriend. So you play as the main dude, and then you choose any two of this lineup. And this game has something like 11 different endings. I have found, I think I, I think the most I've ever gotten was seven or eight of the different endings. The endings involve either becoming a book publisher or, um, or starting a band and getting a record deal and stuff like that. Just because the game is so quirky and weird the more you play this game, uh, the different paths you take and depending on who you choose, that's the direction you can go. Like, you know, someone's a musician, so that's when you can get, do the route to get the record contract and stuff like that. So if you're not gonna play as that person, you play as someone else. There's a lot going on, very, very deeply involved with this game, and I absolutely love this game. You can do so much. I can go on and on about this game. Um, I will tell you that I'm giving Maniac Mansion an S. I think it's fantastic. I love it. And it's been a long time since I've beaten this game too. I might have to try playing it again. Don't even remember half the stuff to do or what to grab or what to use on what and stuff like that. It's gonna be a lot of fun playing this game again. Really quickly wanted to show this off. I just think it's interesting that more than half of the people who watch my channel aren't even subscribed. If you dig this style of video, I do these kind of videos all the time. Make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss out on any of these videos. I've always got a new one coming out soon, and a lot of times using your suggestions in the comments too, so make sure you drop those as well. Metal Mech looks way cooler than it plays, and that's unfortunate for me because I think the graphics look great. I think the idea that you play as this kind of robotic, pod tank gunning thing that you can also, you know, get out of and move around and come back in. Hey, that's perfect. I mean, that's what Blaster Master is, right? Kind of. But you play as this slow, bipedal walking gunning machine, which again, on paper, sounds really, really cool. But when you play the game, it's really, really not as cool. And then you can also jump out and you can shoot enemies that way or get into areas that you couldn't as your mech. It's just, I don't know, it's just kind of slow moving and not a whole lot of action. I mean, there's a ton of action involved, but not the kind that you want, I guess. No, I'm, you know, I'm putting this game as a D. I was hoping for and expecting more out of this game, but it's it's a D. It's still fun to look at. I mean, please still look at it because the graphics are really cool. Uh, I, th I thought the music was fine. I just wish it was better. Pinball Quest and my love for video pinball. Now, i um, covered a few other pinball games uh, on this channel before in the past, and Pinball Quest is um, is a favorite of mine uh, for a few reasons. Um, it has four modes, it has four uh, four tables you can play as. Three of the four, just kind of like your basic pinball in a way, they're not bad, it's, it's cool to have on there too. But the reason to play this game is the RPG mode, where it actually has a storyline. Like, you know, the princess is kidnapped and you have to save her by nature of pinball. So you have to, you know, go through the doorways and defeat the enemies. Um, when you move to a different part of the map, you can actually move your flippers to where they should be so you can, um, you know, bop them out of the way and stuff like that. There's a lot going on and the fact that you can turn a pinball game into an RPG, have some RPG elements kind of, make it into an adventure game. Well, what a fun idea. How great is that? Pinball mechanics for NES they're not that great as far as getting the angles for like if you know pinball and know the angles and you know exactly where the ball is going to be on the flipper to hit it a certain way so it's going to go right to where you want to go doesn't do that so much for this game you just kind of have to hit the ball and hope for the best if you're off course you just have to try to hit it at a different angle or something like that um wish that part was better if it was better that i may even give this game an s but it's really really fun and a great game i, I still recommend it i'm gonna give this game an a Pro Sports Hockey might be the best hockey game there is on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now I know I can hear you already from over here. How are you supposed to compete with ice hockey, right? How are you supposed to compete with Blades of Steel? Now Blades of Steel is the measuring stick, no doubt about that at all. I'm not the biggest fan of Blades of Steel, but I also can't deny its popularity. Pro Sport Hockey was a later release game for the NES. It is a hockey game for the NES and it plays so good. It has just that little bit of ice momentum when you're skating around. The passing's great, the shooting's great. I think this game's really good, especially for a hockey game, especially for a sports game on the NES. Uh, Jellico, as you've already seen from this list, has a ton of sports options. Why not hockey? 
And Pro Sport Hockey, if you haven't checked it out yet and you like, you know, hockey games, you like Blades of Steel and all that, want something different, want something new, has a different angle too, so instead of heading east to west, you're heading north and south. So worth checking out. I'm going to put this game as a C. And it's not C in a bad way, it's a C in a good way. Racket Attack, because we've already had basketball and baseball four times over, and uh, even hockey and even football to an extent. Why not tennis? Well, not only does tennis have the stupidest scoring system of all time, even when I was in school, I liked playing tennis. I wasn't very good at it, but it was still fun. It was like, it was like live action pong. I like ping pong, so, you know, why not like tennis, you know? This game, the hit detection is way off. The hit detection is almost non-existent. Sometimes you're hitting the ball and it goes right through you. Sometimes you're swinging at the ball and it's nowhere to be found. And sometimes you swing at the ball and you're not even touching it, but it acts as a hit. This game is pretty, pretty, pretty terrible. And I'm gonna put this game as an F. It's the slow movement of the racket, I think. I mean, because like NES tennis, black box tennis, that game's all right. You know, we've played that one, of course. This one is just not, not, no, come on, no, come on, man. Rampart's an interesting one if you've never played it before. When you first look at it, you're just like, <sighs> war strategy something? No, no, no. Let this, this game has a couple of different rounds or modes or whatever. This game is a lot of fun. I'm going to tell you up front. You can play this game as a two-player as well, but I'm just going to show you the one-player mode here. So you choose your castle and you have your little area around your castle. So you put down your cannons. Those are going to be your firepower, right? So now you use those cannons to fight off the enemy. It can be the boats. It can be the ships. Sometimes if the ship docks, then they're going to release people or tanks or, you know, whatever things on the ground that you have to attack those guys too. And then at the end of the round, since the ships and everything are also fighting you and tearing down your walls, well, you have to build a solid wall around your castle, around your area. And during this time, you can build a solid wall around the other castles. And when you do that, you get more firepower more cannons. So then on the next round, you have extra firepower to defeat more enemies. And the round after that, you get more time to build, kind of like Tetris in a little bit, as you can see, around more stuff to get more cannons, to get more firepower. And it's just gonna keep going and going and going. Now imagine this on a two player when you're fighting each other. Oh, that's great, love that. Now they have this game, I played a lot of this for the Super Nintendo more than anything. The Super Nintendo version I thought was fantastic. The NES version, super fantastic as well. It's actually, it, it plays very, very well on the NES. I love this game a lot and I'm going to give this game an A. Robo Warrior, if I took every Nintendo game ever and ranked them from best to worst, Robo Warrior might be dead center in the middle. It's not the super best game in the world, but it's also not the worst game in the world. As if they made Bomberman Adventure or something for the NES. It's a little bit like that, because you're a robot, sure, and you bomb stuff, okay, and when you bomb stuff, stuff moves out of your way and it has you clear a path and defeat more enemies and use more bombs. If you're close to the bomb, you take damage. You can pick up, uh, you know, weapons and fire whatever items along the way to help you with your journey. Again, it's the most right down the middle. I don't want to say the word mediocre because mediocre, even though mediocre means average, it, it's, it still has a negative connotation to it. It's okay. It's just not great, but it's not bad. This game is the perfect rental <laughs> back when we could rent video games. And like this tier list, I'm going to put it right at C, right in the middle. If you've never played Shatterhand before for the NES, after this video, find a way to play Shatterhand for the NES. It's one of the best action games on there. You have your Batman, you have your Ninja Gaiden, you have your Shatterhand. This game is this game is exceptionally good, I think. Great action game. You run around and you punch people with your Shatterhand. You have like, you know, your your punching thing. And if you're kind of hitting it a bunch of times, you're just throwing these just lobbing stiff punches <laughs> to defeat enemies, defeat walls. Uh, I think the graphics are great, the sound is great, the music's great, it's the, the perfect, it was like, it's, it's a great game. It's like the perfect guide for like, here's how to make a great Nintendo game. Perfect level of difficulty, might die a few times along the way, but the more you play it, the more you get better at it. Of course, I mean, that's kind of how video games work, right? You also pick up other items too, and there's also times that you can cash in your, you get these coins, and you can cash in your coins to get extra health. Or if you don't have enough money for it, you can't get it. So, I mean, you gotta pick up those coins. It's not, I mean, it's optional, but if you want your stuff, 
you gotta pick them up. So I like that about this game too. You know, it's not like other games where you just find random health all over the place. For this one, it's like, hey, you want extra health? You, you, you took some damage, did you? Well, you gotta pay extra for that. You gotta pay a premium, man, I'm telling you. I even like the fact that you can kind of like hop up on the chain link fence. You didn't have to have that in this game. You could have just climbed a wall. You could have just like, you know, wall jumped or something like that, but no, there's chain link fences around there. So you can just, you just kind of jump up and cling onto them and uh, attack enemies that way too. I love it. This game's beautiful. It's called Shatterhand. I'm giving this game an S. You should check it out if you haven't done so already. It's fun. Totally Rad was during a time where Attitude sold tickets, I guess. The game's called Totally Rad. Uh, the box art means nothing about the game. I do like the fact that it has the multi-level scrolling for the background, and you have your shots, you can charge up your shots, power them up, so you can, you know, blast a bunch of shot all at once, you know, like it's a stronger attack. Only whenever you jump or can't jump or whatever, then you can't use it, so you have to, like, make sure you're on the same level, and of course, that's the first level, you're going up and down hills all the time, so that's kind of annoying. It plays decent. It's all right. I like the colors. I like what this game's throwing down. I'll put this game as a B. Wampum is one of the best platformers on the NES, and I'm not just saying that for the sake of saying that. Mario 3 is usually crowned king for the best platformers. Um, you know, I put Tiny Toon Adventures up there as well. And Wampum, definitely one of the best. It really is. It has the downward thrust or upward thrust motion that you can do to defeat your enemies, or you can just stab them with your spear. After the brief kind of first stage tutorial style stage, then you can choose which level you want to go to to uh, carry on with the rest of your game. It's, this game is super, super, super good. I like this game quite a bit. Fun to come back to, perfect level of difficulty, I think, for playing Nintendo games. It's unfortunate too, this game is the sequel to another game in Japan. Now in Japan, it's known as something else, It's but they, they reskinned it as Wampum to bring out in America. This game's super awesome. This game's an A. What about the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles? Now this game is based on a TV show of the time. I never watched it, but my wife was a huge fan of it. I think we actually have one of the DVD box sets here. And there's a few other Indiana Jones games for the NES. A lot of them, not all that great. This one's actually really good. Well, I think it's better than the other ones anyway. You have your running, you get attacked. It's terrible because once you, the first time you get hit, you lose your item, you lose your whip. So it's like, ah, you can't be Indiana Jones without your whip right? Well, I guess you can be because you get to be. This is Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Super fun game. I'll, I'll give this game a B. I think it's pretty cool. A whole lot of great games from Jellico on this list. Some great platformers, some great sports games, a little bit of everything. I've done so many other videos like this too, like this company here, that company there. So many of them for the NES. You got to check them all out because there's so many great games out there that maybe you've never heard of, or maybe you're just like, oh, I forgot all about the game. I haven't seen that game in years. That's what it's all about, man. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.